Hi. Okay, I guess we're officially starting. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Crystal Gale Phelps, and I'm one half of the Coworker Collaborative Project. And I'm Jordan Busher. And Crystal and I came up with this idea to start Coworker Gallery several years ago when we were co-workers together at the Arts Commission. We shared an office. Uh, we both had a history curating exhibitions and we were interested in working on that together. And we thought, why not use the space that we have available to us? We were also really interested in micro galleries and the way that artist run spaces tend to happen wherever artists can make it happen. There's this scrappiness and this willingness to um, be creative with how you put on exhibitions. So where should we start? Okay, we're gonna start over here. And it's sort of backwards for us because we uh, placed this piece almost as the like, the goodbye, the wave out the door, but we're gonna start at the end and then move our way back through. Um, this is Jacqueline Cedar, an artist based out of New York, um, also an artist who does quite a bit of gallery work and artist-run spaces herself. And This is Marcy Ellis, an artist and illustrator based in Tucson, Arizona. Um, and a lot of her work is uh, really like fine illustrative work. And this was a pairing that sort of happened organically for us um, when we were looking at the show as a whole and we're really examining like the how space can be both intimate as well as expansive and you know that's really shown here in marcy's work with just the richness of the detail but also interested in looking at the um, disjointed sort of body like you're just seeing and revealing certain aspects of it and how that can interact with space and with both of them, there was a kind of um, quietness to the parts of the body that are there. There's like a, um, a lot of movement that's happening in this one, but there's still this idea of contemplative reflection and the stillness of the hand and the position of the hand. There was just some sort of poetic resonance between the two for us. Uh, so here in this pairing, we have uh, Kirby Miles, who is an artist based in Chattanooga, Tennessee and Lena Puerta, who's a Colombian-American artist based in New York. And both of them are working with an idea of kind of transmutation of trash into something beautiful and taking these collections of detritus um, and, and trying to transform them, especially through um, these sort of tiny moments that you need to get up close to see with glitter and googly eyes and small drawn lines and kind of taking this larger problem of um, hyperconsumption and trying to turn it into something minute and beautiful. Yeah, and really formally these pieces uh, have so much fun conversation between them with the details. It re requires a little bit of like slower and detailed looking when you get in there. Um, and it's also like this, there's like two pairs in this show where I'm like, I really want to touch it but I can't, and this is one of them, uh, because it's just so appealing. Um, and it's so, uh, it's using materials, like craft materials that we're usually allowed to touch. Um, so I really love challenging viewers in that way, because I know it's hard for me, I know it's hard for other people. Um, but there is one thing in the show you can't touch, but we'll get there. Um, but yeah, really interested too in the way that this sculptural, like sort of form starts to come out and this one really pulls you in. So that juxtaposition, those formal components um, are really at play here as well. Yeah. Which is kind of a nice segue into these two over here with this pair. Um, this is Kate Sable out of the um, Washington DC metro area. Mm -hmm. And this is Abby Sipar who is from the Akron area. And with these two, uh, you, can, you can clearly see that there's kind of a formal rhyming that happens between the two and this kind of movement back and forth with the color choices, with the shape choices. Um, and we were really interested in this pairing for that reason, but also because it's moving between 2D and 3D, so it's doing it in um, different ways and referencing the body. Both of, them are, both of them are kind of showing us something about body shapes and yeah. You want to take that? Yeah, so like between these two, when we're talking about the body, it's also something that we repeat in how we sort of curate is 
looking for joy, right? So these are both really like joyful, sumptuous works. And I think finding joy and leaning into like the, the idea of the pleasure principle um, is something that helps balance out the tempo of the show as a whole. Um, so with this pairing, these are works you can touch. This is Adrian Herman. She's based in Portland, Maine, and these are wearable scarves. And Adrian is, you know, uh, when we're talking about detritus, this is another example of that. Um, so when we were looking at this pair, really interested in not only the formal shape of these coming out and mimicking the shape, um, but other things as well. Jordan, do you want to introduce this work? So this is Rachel Ostrow, a painter out of New York City, Brooklyn. And uh, Rachel's process is to build layers and layers of paint, um, allowing it to happen in sort of messy, um, uncontrolled ways. And then she comes in with a squeegee to try to control the medium. Um, and so the final result is like these layers and layers of paint that are then scraped into to create the image. Um, and it becomes very glossy and sort of um, dreamlike and almost clean looking with those edges that she brings in with the squeegee. And it's just nice to think about um, controlling that chaos with painting and ending up with a slick result. And then thinking about the chaos of these trash piles and then also uh, attempting to find beauty there too. Even though it does not have the control, it is spilling out, it is a mess, it is um, out of control in a way that this one keeps the control there. And this, you know, this is our interpretation of like why we put these two together. Um, and part of our hope is that then the artists are surprised or um, excited to be paired with work that maybe is a little bit different from the work that they're making when they're just talking about their statement. Yeah, yeah, and how those like interactions take place. That, that circles back to this idea of joy that we play with and community networking because it offers a new lens to like reflect on your own work as well when you see it in uh, a new sort of vantage point. And honestly, that was the best part of us sharing an office and being co-workers together yes. when we were working, you know, those conversations and new ideas that sparked because we were sharing that space. Okay. This is Cecile Chong, an um, artist of Ecuadorian Chinese descent, now based in New York City. And Cecile works with encaustic paint and drawing and layers and embeds a lot of material in. So there's like volcanic ash, um, dust, all kinds of things that are built into the surfaces there. This piece is by Dana Reamland, who is based in Toronto, Ontario. And uh, culturally, she comes from a family of Mennonites. Um, so that history and that familial narrative was something that called to us to, to place these two works together. And specifically a matriarchal lineage that's important to both of them here. Yeah, and it's um, just this idea too of like the memory of how that impacts the artists and their work and their process um, is really unique and really special. Yeah, so this work is by Janet Nelson. Janet, hey. Um, so we're gonna talk a little about, about these works um, and then invite Janet up to talk about her work specifically. So we paired Janet's work with um, this piece by Phoenix S. Brown and Phoenix is based in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, celebrates the idea of black feminism and the way that the black female body can be um, part in part with nature to um, produce a joyful effect but also doing it without any specificity about you know which type of flower that is or naming or try to pin anything down but instead allowing it to be very free and um, more of a feeling than something specific. Yeah and the sort of synchronicity with these was that um, I invited Janet to join the show. We have a relationship uh, that's pre-existing and she was like can I make something new and I was like yes I absolutely trust you to make something for the show so it, we didn't see it until it was completed and we were just like this is such a synchronous moment uh, to happen to pull this pair together so Gianna would you like to come up and introduce yourself <laughs> I know, it's a little bit like show and tell, yeah, but we love that. <laughs> um, I work as 
a tattooer in Ypsilanti and I live in Ann Arbor, which is not as cool. Ypsi is a lot cooler. <laughs> but uh, I really only started painting in like 2020 when the pandemic happened and work was shut down for three, four months, I think. And um, yeah, so I've only really painted in like Sumi ink and gouache and volcanic ash sounds a lot cooler. I want to try that sometime. <laughs> the world is your oyster. <laughs> yeah. But I guess that this one was kind of inspired by my dog who, when I would always go on walks with her, I saw the most garter snakes I have ever seen in my life. They always came out of the boardwalk or the onto the trail and slithered with us. And um, when she passed, I had these like crazy intense dreams about snakes. And I just wanted to kind of put that into something. Um, so yeah, I think most of my, maybe all of my paintings are come from my dreams. So yeah, it's yeah. kind of a good way to get it out. Yeah. In my head and onto paper. That's great. Thanks yeah. so much for sharing. Yeah, dude. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. We'll keep moving. <laughs> this pairing um, has work by Jane Kang Nelson, or sorry, Jane Kang Lawrence. And uh, Jane is based in uh, New York City and upstate New York. She runs a space called um, Peep Projects in upstate New York in Terrytown. And uh, Jane works with uh, imagery from Korean mythology, specifically around longevity. And so symbolism is something that's really important in her work, and that's where uh, the fish motif comes from. And then we and paired this it with is this. work uh, by Echo Goff, who is in the Troy, New York area. And their work, they're an artist, a musician, and um, their work is got sort of this like punchy, fun uh, joke that happens between like titles of work and the iconography that's pulled in place in the paintings. And here we're really interested in thinking about like femininity and symbolism and different ways to interpret and react to that as an artist. Um, whereas here you have like the orange and what a fruit symbolizes with feminine imagery and then this like punchy bit that's like, oh my God, no. Like, I love that. I think it's really funny uh, and really smart. Uh, so this is uh, work by Carrie Day, who's in the Bowling Green area. She's a ceramic artist and painter. And this is work by Hale Eksinki, who's an artist um, of Turkish descent based in Chicago. And here we were kind of coming back to both formal elements in terms of the rhymes between the balloon shape and these sort of upside down um, shapes that reference that balloon the colors paired together, but also this idea of imagery that relates to memory and childhood. So um, with Hale's work, it's about this idea of um, the immigrant story and looking back at old photographs and how she can move those photographs into her current um, lived situation through um, symbols and coding and especially with this crochet work here and the idea of women's work and how the coding can happen as a secret language. Um, and then with Carrie's work. Yeah, a lot of like these characters specifically are influenced by um, like childhood and motherhood and the relationship between that. And I was really interested in this idea of like uh, the unreliableness of memory and how like sometimes I even think about like my nieces and nephews as little creatures, right? They're like, other than human, they possess so many more qualities. And I think there's something beautiful to think about, like memory and placing those stories and like how they can take a turn and become sort of myth in their, in their own ways. And speaking of motherhood. Yeah, these two pieces are also related to motherhood. Um, this is by Suzanne Skizeron, who's out of the Providence area. Yeah, and this is by Sarah Dolan in the Washington, D.C. area. And here, like, the formal qualities are very evident in this one for us, but thinking about, like, Sarah draws a lot of images related to her daughter and the items that her daughter interacts with and leaves about and it's, it's really interesting to think about like the forward facing open absent body and the body that is, you know, back facing the viewer. 
And with Suzanne's work, she has a whole series of women working in studio spaces. And she envisions these as caregivers who are taking the time that they can get whenever they can get it. So these are often night scenes um, and the edges of the studio sort of dematerialize thinking about the idea that the studio can happen anywhere it needs to happen, especially for caregivers, you know, if that's the kitchen table or wherever it might be. But these are invented spaces that she's giving these artists to give them the opportunity to make their work again. Yeah, and that shifts us into more of like an architectural and sentimental uh, pairing. So here we have Tessa Green O'Brien, who's a painter based in Portland, Maine. Uh, really interested in uh, the memory of a childhood home, the sentimental connections that we have with architecture, and how that's evoked through, you know, color and style. Mm -hmm. And that's paired with Amy Sackstetter, an artist in Ypsilanti. And Amy's work is involved with sort of picking up elements of the world that she finds that are detritus and kind of turning these into giving them the attention that turns them into souvenirs. So she collects them, she places them, photographs them, makes collages, and then makes paintings, and they go through all these different processes to eventually get to the point where, you know, there's a, a finished piece up on the wall. And so with both of them, they're really um, focused on a meditation on where we put meaning in physical objects or structures. And then here is our last pairing. Yeah, so here is work by Jessica Freelandheisen, who is based in Hamtramck, which is outside of Detroit, Michigan. And then this is Keisha Prelo Martin, who's based in New York. And Keisha, um, as a painter, is really interested in uh, depicting moments of joy and freedom and exuberance. And there's this kind of like physicality that goes with that. So her figures are often. Um, dancing or biking or running or walking but then also taking a bath and relaxing it's like all very much about the body and what we do to create joy with our bodies yeah and I like when I saw this painting I immediately thought of Jess because a lot of her work this is a uh, still from a performance that she did so in her neighborhood she went around to different markets and things and did her daily workout with like there are pictures of her with like the butchers and the produce people and just like really got into it and inspired a whole series for her called um, the Jesser Size series and um, just the amount of like humor and joy and finding that like everyday place to insert yourself not only as an artist but as a human in space I think it's it's just really really fun this is like part of the reason why we do this right is because we want to make hearts, hearts throb, as we say, and just really find those moments. And this pairing was just so incredibly dynamic in that way. So we thank you for coming today and for all your attention as we walked you through the show.